Hello, my name is Gabriel Mejia and I am from University of Los Andes. Today I am going to show you my term project and it is a continuous simulation and parameter space study of a digital for input microRNA based on of H3 expression controller. So first of all, an overview. Uh, we are going to be implementing a genetic circuit in uh, human cells that we are going to call replicative senescent cells um, and we want to make some logic function based on microRNAs and finally uh, we would like to see uh, some kind of an output here like in green so uh, first of all what is senescence? Senescence is in a state when uh, a cell doesn't divide anymore uh, so eventually uh, it dies but uh, for the purposes of our um, project we are going to focus on replicative senescence um, this happens when the telomeres of a cell uh, shorten and due to a lack of telomerase um, the cell stops dividing and um, we can see uh, an aging phenotype derived from this condition in animals. Uh, well, uh, replicative senescence can be marked with uh, microRNAs that can serve, that can serve as uh, biomarkers for this condition. Also, uh, if a cell is in replicative senescence, then uh, you can recover that cell uh, by in a human by the expression of H3, which is the catalytic subunit of uh, telomerase, that is the enzyme that uh, can replicate the telomeres. Uh, so well, what are we going to do? We are going to implement uh, a logic function that it's based on four inputs. Uh, which are uh, four microRNAs, uh, 182, 103, 372, and 373. Uh, it turns out that uh, 372 and 373 are uh, like unique biomarkers of replicative senescence, while uh, 182 and 183 are biomarkers for senescence but they are biomarkers for oncogenic uh, senescence and if these uh, biomarkers are present uh, there is a high it's highly like likely that our cells uh, are damaged like dna damage and could cause cancer so uh, the logic function that we want to implement is that we just want to have an output which is going to be h third and gfp if uh, we have uh, both biomarkers for replicative senescence and no one of the biomarkers for uh, stress-induced uh, senescence that is like oncogenic senescence. This was the proposed genetic regulatory network uh, that aims to uh, do the job. So here we have both of our biomarkers for replicative senescence and they are uh, repressing a repressor A that we don't know uh, and that repressor is repressing our output so it is a double negation here and uh, this is an AND gate and here we have the NOR gate uh, with our two biomarkers for oncogenic senescence here we can see the state variables uh, proposed for the model. So here in red we have the the inputs of our model. So the, here we can see the microRNAs, and here we can see our output in green. Everything that is in in black, it's uh, messenger RNAs, genes, our repressor protein A and this is, these are going to be our state variables in the model. So now we're going to see our model 
this is our parts that we could that we could see um, <clears throat> and we divided them into reactions so first of all we have um, everything that has to do with M with messenger RNA so this is for a repressor A and this is for the output uh, second of all we have all these things here that has to be this has to do with um, the repression by a microRNA risk complex. Uh, here we have <clears throat> the production of the repressor A, and here finally uh, we have uh, the production of our output. Now, finally, for all our proteins, we have their degradation. After proposing the reactions or parts, we are going to uh, follow with the ODE modeling. So here is our equations. Uh, like a, a great remark here, we can see uh, the heel term uh, of the repressor A. So the scope of this study was to do uh, uh, parameter space study. So we took uh, the parameters in the model that were uh, kind of more engineerable. Um, we did variation of five, five, five times each parameter. Uh, all, all the values that we plugged in in the model uh, were um, biologically realistic. Um, uh, doing all permutations, we could observe uh, 3,125 uh, possible combinations. So here I can show you uh, one of uh, the results. This is the results for the best uh, performing circuit. So here we can see a digital time diagram of uh, the inputs. So here are all the possible inputs. Uh, this time span is uh, 12 hours, this from here to here. And we are going to define uh, two important things. First of all, it's the max response. It's, it's basically uh, the maximum H third expression here in, in, in the desired condition. And the secondary maximum, it's the um, not wanted condition, like the, the maximum of the non wanted condition. Well, now we're going to define the metrics that are going to serve as a, a as an assessment tool for judging a combination of parameters. So first of all, uh, we have the gain, that is the maximum H third expression in the desired condition uh, over the secondary maximum that we don't want. So we want maximum gain. And we also want uh, like a maximum output signal. So first of all, we made a gain filter. So we did all the combinations and we evaluated um, which ones have a gain that was more than uh, 1.499. Uh, and they, that gave us uh, 931 possible combinations. After that, we took those combinations and we applied a, a max uh, expression of H third filter. And we put uh, our filter here. So it was uh, greater, it, has, it, it had to be greater than 2.3 times uh, 10 uh, to the minus three and that gave us a 10 final best results. Here you can see our final uh, results. This is the, these are the 10 best and you can see that our desired condition has an output that is larger than all the other conditions. Uh, here we can see that this line, this red line, uh, is 1.8 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 could serve as a threshold. These are my final results. These are the parameter combinations 
that uh, gave us the performance that we wanted. For future improvements, we note that we could add a, a buffer st stage here after the second end condition that uh, would be an activator with a threshold of 1.8 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 and a height cooperativity that would give us uh, a very digital behavior in the output functions that we saw. Uh, finally, we could uh, make uh, like a gain a function maximization using a non extensive method because we tried all the combination possibles, but we could use MATLAB optimization functions that could do that for us. That would be all. I want to thank you personally for watching the video and remember you this quote for, from Oppenheimer. These are the most important uh, references that I used for modeling.